a spiritual awakening is mandatory. Life can be a contradiction. But it doesn't have to be a lie. A lie. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the second episode of Contradiction. Uh, myself, Bernard Alvarez, and Roxy Lopez have developed this particular series to help talk about topics that are happening in our lives and in the world, and to help us come to terms with some of the many contradictions that we must deal with uh, in our day-to-day -day lives. In, to in this week's episode, we're going to be discussing money and the economic paradigm. Talk about a contradiction, uh, especially for those of us who are very spiritual and into activism. So without further ado, let me bring Roxy Lopez on and welcome her to the show. Hello, Roxy. Welcome. Hi. Thank you, and, and welcome to everyone who's viewing. Uh, we only hope to inspire and um, connect with you all on some really important uh, contradictions that exist in our lives that I think hold us back. So thanks for uh, joining us today. And Roxy, what about um, money and the economic paradigm? I know that uh, we all say money is the root of all evil. A lot of us uh, really have a distaste for money, but is it money that is the problem, the economic paradigm that's the problem, or is it greed that's the problem? In my opinion, it is the misuse. Um, and let me start with this. Do you ever have these thoughts? Um, let's say you uh, are at a mall and you see a uh, blouse that you want and it's um, 112 bucks and you just have to have it but you don't have the money to buy it does that mean I, I want you to process how you felt all right in that moment um, do you start saying to yourself well I'm gonna manifest the money because I want it are you gonna say well I really don't need that blouse or for men you know a pair of shorts or whatever whatever it is that you want a piece of equipment for your computer doesn't matter the point that I'm trying to make is what are the thought patterns that you go through when you cannot buy or purchase that of what you want? And do you go through guilt? Do you say, well, gosh, you know, really, I shouldn't be spending money like this because I really need more money for food or I really should pay attention to my rent or whatever. And you go into this spiral that doesn't make you feel good. The influence of that thought really takes you on more of a downward spiral for most people than it does an upward spiral. Now let me tell you the trick. Again, we are all evolving and we're evolving in our thought patterns, our, our works, our deeds, what we say and think at all times. So everything that we think begins to manifest and you know we can become our own worst enemy i know i certainly have done that before uh i become my own worst enemy due to the fear that i get into so let's go back to the mall and let's replay this now i have low self-esteem because i don't have enough money and i saw britney spears on a show the other night and she was wearing the most fabulous dress and when i looked it up on the internet that dress was 12 grand i can never afford it See the thoughts? Yeah. Okay. So it affects my self-esteem in not a good way. Is it boosting or inspiring me? No. Money. Money, in my opinion, is a tool. It's a tool of trade. It's a tool of, of how we trade or buy or purchase whatever. Food, clothing, housing, whatever. It is what we have designed. It is the use of money that gets us, you know, uh, on this show tonight. The use of money that bought me this computer. I don't know anyone that I could trade services for a computer or for my rent or whatever. So let's take a look at this a little bit closer. Is it really money that is evil or is it our perception of money and our wants and our needs that turn us into this downward spiral of the haves and the have nots? So let's go back to the mall. So I'm at the mall and I see a blouse and it's $112 or $120 and I don't have the money to buy it. Should I feel guilty? No. Should I feel guilty that I want it? No. I, I should not feel guilty. I'm appreciative of the construction of the blouse, the designer that created it. Did the designer create it to cause evil in the world? 
No. Does it look good when I try it on? It's very flattering. It looks lovely. All right. Should I feel guilty about that because I look good in the blouse? We have to go back to what of our what are reasons. We can have whatever we want. We we really can, people. And I know that's very difficult for people who struggle with just buying food. I know that. I I have friends in my life um, that that have struggles like this. But let me tell you something. Change the way you think and you'll change the way you exist here on this planet. The bottom line is you've been socially, we've been socially engineered to have these thoughts and these thought patterns. I firmly believe it. And only we can recreate how we experience money in the world. And the contradiction is this. Money seems to cause a lot of problems. Money seems to fund wars and bad things. Money also provides food on our tables. Money also provides us that blouse at the mall that we want to buy and wear when we have our 20th anniversary with our husband and we want to look pretty as the day he met us. We have to realize how to separate the value of money. It's intrinsic to the value we place on ourselves. That's all I'm trying to say. Don't allow money to degrade your own personal value. You are valuable without money. You are valuable to the world. What you are made up of, money can't buy. When it, when it comes to money, there is a certain negativity that comes to it. We see it being abused many, many times over, especially when it comes to these multi-billion dollar uh, investments to quote unquote to put a senator in their pocket or to um, uh, pass some type of legislation which is not going to be helpful to humanity uh, my my idea and my new intention with money is is that if I have it and I am able a to to feel good about myself and not have to live uh, there's a saying a, a gentleman always says to me may you never have to do without so if I can live in a world where I'm not doing without the basic essentials uh, and anything extra, I can help to promote a, a, a great, let's say, a local child care program or, uh, or some type of um, something to, to help the community, then, of course, I want to utilize money in that particular fashion. That, that is me intrinsically. That's who I am. I don't ask for a lot. I don't, I don't like to be too flashy or anything like that. But the reality of it is, is that, you know, money is a tool. The economic paradigm stinks. It's horrible. The World Bank, uh, the fiat money system, that's a whole nother show. But the idea of money and the economic paradigm and the contradiction, and again, that's what we're talking about here. We're talking about the contradiction of money and the economic paradigm. What can it do that's positive? What can it do that's negative? How does the use of money in our life make us feel and 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 create this, uh, well, for lack of a better term, cognitive dissonance, which we'll get into in a future episode, about our feelings for it? I would have loved to have had those $25 sneakers. It would have made me feel good. It, I'm looking for winter shoes right now. It snows here. I needed something that's sturdy, and uh, I couldn't afford it. So, yeah, it does make you feel bad, and it does create this downward spiral, but money is not evil in itself. It's how we use it. So, as we wrap this up, Roxy, tell me, um, how do we wrap this up? How do we, how do we move beyond the contradiction? Is there, is there a way to move beyond the contradiction? Again, I think it's um, our attitude and our perception. So, um, I, I also, the counterpart to just going into a downward spiral of a lack, I would want to plug into abundance. Mm -hmm. um, uh, again, I'm allowed and you're allowed to have those shoes mm -hmm. for whatever reasons. They were created to wear. Somebody designed them and you're allowed. That's not the point. It's our perception and our attitude towards money. Um, if we allow ourselves to tap into uh, abundance and and look i'm not saying this is easy but we change the way we think and then we change the way we act and then we change the way 
we uh, behave and all the rest of it and it will manifest and we are creators and co-creators so it's a matter of choice do I really want those shoes do I really want that blouse I will make it happen mm -hmm. I will it, it will happen and it shouldn't happen it should not happen because I feel guilty or robbed or have a resentment towards those who can buy them. It, it, see, this is how we cause such a, it's so ununifying, if that's even a word, for each other, you know. And so it, it, I say we change our attitude I agree. and we plug into abundance and creativity and create a way. Maybe one day you'll design a pair of shoes like that yourself. Yep. I think sky's the limit. Yeah. So, you know, remember. Life is a contradiction. But it doesn't have to be a lie. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. A spiritual, a spiritual awakening, awakening is, mandatory. is mandatory. Life can be Life a contradiction. Can be a contradiction. But it doesn't, have, it doesn't to have to be a lie. <laughs>Hello, everybody, and welcome to the second episode of Dime. I know that uh, we all say money is the root of all evil. A lot of us uh, really have a distaste for money. But is it money that is the problem, the economic paradigm that's the problem, or is it greed that's the problem? In my opinion, it is the misuse. Um, and let me start with... ...mode of contradiction. Uh, myself, Bernard Alvarez, and Roxy Lopez have developed this particular series to help talk about topics that are happening in our lives and in the world and to help us come to terms with some of the many contradictions that we must deal with uh, in our day-to-day -day lives. In, to, in this week's episode, we're going to be discussing money and the economic paradigm. Talk about a contradiction, uh, especially for those of us who are very spiritual and into activism. So, without further ado, let me bring Roxy Lopez on and welcome her to the show. Hello, Roxy. Welcome. Hi. Thank you, and and welcome to everyone who's viewing. Uh, we only hope to inspire and um, connect with you all on some really important uh, contradictions that exist in our lives that I think hold us back. So, thanks for uh, joining us today. And Roxy, what about um, money and the economic?